Betsy and Thomas here for the American Intelligence Media. Whoa, do we have a whopper for you. Let me tell you, we've been doing the research on Robert Mueller, and of course, we've been posting on our Truth News headlines the leading articles of the day that we think are important in the unfolding of the cabal in Washington. So we wanted to research Mueller and our conclave and we wanted to see if there were any skeletons perhaps in that closet that haven't come to f the fore and are important in our narrative going forward and boy did we find it. Thomas I want to tee us up before telling the folks what we found you know let them kind of get a lay of the land of what's going on with Mueller right now in case they haven't been paying attention. Oh my goodness. Betsy, if you get me started on Mueller, I might not stop. Well, I'm here to keep you guided, you and know. I, you <laughs> will have to on this one because the big reveal Ooh, is, are you ready? Huge. You don't have to wait until the 23rd uh, minute of the tape. It's the next president of the United States will be and is being protected by Mueller. Who? Who do you think it'll be? What do you think, Betsy? Oh, I don't know. Duval if, Patrick. If I because <laughs> Obama has chosen him. Valerie Jarrett has said her heart is set on him because he's a Chicago guy, you know, and she's a Chicago mobster. And he fits right in because he, you know, came out of that genre. He, he worked in Boston with Mueller. Then he went into all, then he was placed into all the best places that you would want to be placed as a crooked lawyer to look like you were a straight lawyer. That would be the NAACP, uh, then as appointed as a U.S. attorney uh, in a number of different districts, and then also as a U.S. attorney assigned to civil rights, where he actually took on a case with Bill Clinton. Oh, now, now, Thomas, it's not fair to folks, because they've never heard this name, Patrick Duvall. And maybe some on the inner circles have, like old Mitt Romney knows who he is. <laughs> and no, people haven't heard of this. So they're just trying to get their heads wrapped around that Mueller allowed Building 7 to free fall without even questioning why that happened on his 9-11 reports, right? Yes. People are not that far along. So, so let me say this. Give me a moment. We've done tons of citizen intelligence reports on Mueller. So folks, go to our site at aimfortruth.org to read about what we've written prior. Now we have what's going on right now with the uncovering of the bureaucrats around Mueller, Comey, FBI, that are causing issues. So that's what I want to talk about first. Catch everybody up there. Then let's go in and talk about Patrick. Okay. In the last week, we saw, because of the Office of Inspector General doing an investigation of the entire Department of Justice and the FBI and the way that they work together, not only got Peter Stroke demoted to the HR department because he has been part of every counterintelligence nonsense uh, to list them all would take a while. But you know that he's in the news. But also in the news is uh, Bruce Orr, who is in the Department of Justice, uh, U.S. Attorney under uh, Sally Yates. Let's remember Sally Yates, I like to call her the traitor, who said she would refuse to enforce Trump's immigration adjustment to, to keep America safe, which was his legal right, which has been <clears throat> now proven by the Supreme Court supporting Trump. And also the Supreme Court said to the lower courts, you shouldn't have been messing around. Can't you read? Basically, anyone knows where that the president has that right. Sally Yates, as a treasonous person, stood up against him and said she refused to do it. She also led an illegal attack against, uh, of course, General Flynn, probably by using a FISA court um, order, a warrant against him and uh, surveilling him, of course, then picking up anybody that he was anywhere near, anyone he was talking to. She's the one who did the entrapment of General Flynn. He didn't have a lawyer when the FBI agents, oh, Peter Stroke, interviewed him and put him in an entrapment situation because they already had the telephone conversation and they knew the exact words that were said. And they tricked him. That's the only thing that they got him on in the uh, Mueller Special Investigation Grand Jury recent indictment where he plea bargained uh, to lying to the FBI. Well, uh, Hillary lied to the FBI. Huma lied. Wiener lied. Cheryl Mills lied. None of them got any punishment. Uh, we have Comey lying to the Congress repeatedly. We have Clapper lying. We have Brennan lying. We have all of these people lying. They didn't get any punishment. So that's what he has, as we predicted. Matt, the entire Mueller investigation would simply 
be going after Manafort's indiscretions with his real estate for his daughter, moving money out of an account, which was an offshore account. We predicted this long before because he'd been in a five-year-long investigation by the Attorney General of New York State. Uh, I believe his name, well, his name is Snyderman. Uh, and also Andrew Weissman, who's on the Mueller team. Andrew Weissman is one of the crookedest lawyers, U.S. Uh, uh, had been U.S. attorney lawyers, but he's always called in to create opposition, what we'd call opposition research, fake evidence. He's the king of fake evidence right after Mueller. Robert Mueller's sorted U.S. attorney record disallowed tremendous amounts of evidence that should be allowed in federal cases. And his rulings when he was a lower uh, uh, U.S. attorney general, I think, uh, out in the West, these cases then tainted every case that came since then. He is the number one person for hiding evidence. And then he got Andrew Weissman, they call him the pit bull, because he usually wins his cases. And then he usually loses them on appeal. And then we have um, another lawyer who had actually represented uh, Clinton, the person who was involved in the Clinton server. Yes, uh, Aaron Zebley. We have the, the uh, out of the 17, 18, 19, however many he has now, they say they spent $5 million. Mark my words, he spent a lot more than $5 million so far. He called in supposedly the best lawyers. No, those are the crookedest lawyers. The one he did not call in was Duval Patrick because he's going to be the 2020 uh, candidate chosen by Obama and Soros. When we say chosen by Obama. Anytime you say Soros, Obama, put in parentheses Soros, because that's who bought and paid for and created him, even though he did work for Valerie Jarrett under the Daily, uh, Mayor Daly's mob. She was the chief of staff for Mayor Daly. And then Michelle Obama, Michael Obama, came to work for her from Harvard directly as a CIA agent and entering into what had been a long-standing battle with ACORN, which was basically an offshoot of the Marxism of uh, Saul Alinsky. Remember the case of Duval Patrick, this uh, governor of Massachusetts, this uh, lawyer who's um, uh, also in Bain Capital, which is what Romney was in. Romney, Bain Capital, received the money from John Bush, George H. W. Bush's brother. Daddy Bush's brother, John Bush, basically carried on the family tradition, as you know, Prescott Bush, oh, earned personally $3 million by uh, being the bank of Hitler here in America, also holding his gold here in America, which Hitler never got back. But anyway, that bank was closed. I think it was called the Bank of America at one point. But anyway, the uh, it was also called Brown Brothers, Herman Brown Brothers, many names. But Prescott Bush, Daddy Bush's daddy, and his two sons, one went and took over the White House, the other one took over a bank called Riggs Banks. Riggs Bank went into Russia along with Daddy Bush and the Vulcans and basically fleeced Russia and they created a bank called Velmont Bank, which was basically Riggs Bank in Russia. They brought, that's the bank that they was supposed to be the trusted bank that was created by the Vulcans so that the Russians could actually learn how to do capitalism. What did it do? It fleeced Russia brought the money back to Bain Capital. Duval Patrick was a lawyer and uh, and worked for uh, Bain Capital. Anybody who works for Bain Capital, including Mitt Romney, is crooked because they're, all their money is crooked. It's CIA money, rogue CIA money from ex-White House presidents who have an incredible brand. And so not only is Duval Patrick getting geared up to run for president, but now in another article produced by our amazing friends, and the brilliant legal uh, researchers' minds who already have spent $5 million on their 17-year-long case against some of these people, these evil people in the D.C. swamp, what many call deep state. I call them, uh, really, all they are is unelected officials who stay in their job and defend it. So they're basically just status quo bureaucrats. But anyway, these status quo bureaucrats have been doing this for a long time. So when you find out who they're protecting and the way that they move that person from one job to the next, to the next, to the next, and then that person becomes a multi-millionaire, the way he only works at these places sometimes for less than a year, the big places, and then he's slated, we now know, because Mueller went back in three different places 
and extracted the record illegally to protect the fact that he's associated with Deval Patrick so that when the time comes, Mueller can come back to D.C. from Wilmer Hale, where he makes $10 million a year being a crooked insider. And his, I think, what, eight people who came out of Wilmer Hale came with uh, Robert Mueller into this investigation. They're all crooked. I could go into each one of their histories and tell you unbelievable sordid facts about their biographies that would make you just realize that the corruption is so incredibly deep, but these people know the future, and that's the reason they expunge the past. They get rid of the evidence. Mueller is the number one DC fixer and evidence hider. He taught it to Comey. Oh, where are those computers? Where are those Blackberries? Where's the Awan Brothers computers? Okay, you're getting into a lot of fascinating details. I want to make sure that folks know that if you want to know this at slow speed and really integrate it, look in the description box and you're going to see an article that outlines all of this. The other thing I'd like to say is that it's getting clear easier and easier now to spot the globalist and the bureaucrats that support their overall goals. So, it, so now you look at Mueller and then you look into this article that we provided and you see the usual suspects and you begin to see that all the names and the companies and the banks are all interlinked. So as we go forward, patriots, when we see a candidate arise for whatever position, senator, congressman, governor, whatever, all we have to do is look at their biographies and that their biographies, if they're not expunged by Robert Mueller, will show us who they are, correct? Absolutely. And We open Robert Mueller's closet, and there's not one skeleton in there. There are so many. It is a morgue. I mean, it's a no graveyard. It's like, you know, those places in Rome where they stack up the bones. That's what it is. He has everybody's skeleton in his closet. But that's the reason that no one ever calls him out for the most obvious things, because they actually tell the exact opposite CIA doublespeak story, that he is the highest integrity of lawyers, and that he didn't even need to go through the ethics committee because no one could be higher than him. Mark my words, folks, he will be brought back when Duval Patrick, if he becomes president, which he will not, but if he did, Mueller would be right back in there with him. And Duval Patrick almost became Hillary Clinton's vice presidential running mate. The only reason was he wasn't finished with his uh, placements. His placements not only then went to Coca-Cola and Reebok. I mean, go down, as Betsy says, look at his biography. You will be shocked. No one can do that unless it's fixed. So what is he doing now? The thing I scream and yell about tremendously, the $2 billion given to Obama for his library, which he says, we can't look at any records from his eight years because he hasn't chosen the physical locality for the records to be stored. And where is he chosen for the library when he gives speeches to say he's in the library? The University of Chicago. So who do you think is managing that $2 billion, which has been slipped into now illegally, the Obama Foundation? That's different from the Michelle Obama Foundation, and that's different from um, OFA, which he says he has 33,000 foot soldiers on the street out ready to resist and continue the purple revolution or the uh, regime change against Trump, our duly elected president. Uh, What's it called? Organizing for action. He changed it from his political campaign and uh, don't you know that that's what's being well, covered? They learned up. how to do that from the Clintons and how you move money around from one foundation to an LLC to here and to there. Valerie Jarrett is sitting in her bunker, a few miles from the White House. She's already said that her heart has chosen. Yes. Deval Patrick. I like to call him Devolved Patsy. He's a Patsy. What does he do now? He sits on the Obama Foundation to manage that two billion dollars. And by the way. Before he left office, he changed the regulations concerning the presidential library because they're holding up the Clintons. I mean, no one knows how many initiatives, foundations, and slush funds uh, called charities that the Clintons own. I don't think anyone does in any of the books, anything I've read. I think they scraped the surface. No one wants to talk about the one I'm screaming about, which is being hid by Mueller because Mueller worked for Hillary in the State Department and carried yellow cake uranium to Putin himself. He was the step-and-fetch-it boy for Hillary. 
and he's investigating Russian meddling. He's Russian meddling, and Uranium One is maybe, Russian meddling. Maybe he hasn't figured out that we, the people out here, know all about him. He's still thinking that we are um, asleep like we were when we listened to all the fake news and the media and the Hollywood. Well, as you said earlier, Betsy, and I want to underscore that, I want to underscore two things that we mentioned before. First off, our friends at America, uh, Americans for Innovation, they must have a hundred people working for them. I don't know. How, our team is pretty impressive, but their team, <laughs> I don't know. They send us stuff that just boggles my brain. As Betsy says, go down, look at the facts below. These are indictable U.S. federal and state documents. In most cases, court documents or SEC doc documents. Court documents that only attorneys people in high places could have had access to in order to alter them. You'd have to pay millions of dollars to get these documents, okay? We are so lucky to have friends there, and every day or so, another one of your your team, now I guess, you know, your team now is getting uh, bigger than the conclave, <laughs> because the stuff that they're feeding us takes my breath away. Well, you know what it is, Thomas, before you go forward, is that uh, there are a lot of good people out there that have had harm done to them by these people. And they've had to be silent because no one would listen to them and the media certainly wouldn't report it. And they may even be fearful of their own safety. And I'm finding more and more people are willing to step forward with information that can be damning, but maybe not uh, something that would be harmful to them, like something that exists out on the internet or through their research that they can get to us that proves our point without jeopardizing who they are. You know what I'm saying? Recently, a reader, as you, I, I think, are insinuating, yeah. wrote to us that many people were killed over the Uranium One deal. Okay, yes, I'm sorry that you know those people, but we said that in so, so many words. When you're dealing with Russian mafia, someone's going to die. Either you go along with the extortion and the blackmail, or you're dead. Now, we know that for... Uh, since 1984, when uh, Wild Bill Clinton brought these Russian mafia into this country and gave them our uranium, and now they control our uranium, uranium enrichment, what's going to happen with our plutonium-239 as it gets taken out of our missiles, on and on. Uh, Hillary just gave them $400 million so they could build a plant over there so they wouldn't have to come over here and rip us off in our plants because our plants are worn out. And we have to renew them, uh, so we need to give $400 million to them in Russia so that they can enrich and downgrade and downblend and work with uranium. Isn't that amazing? And Bill Clinton, the thing I scream about the most, is not the 152, they say 145, 145 million went to Hillary as part of the uranium one. Others have pointed out and demonstrated to me it's 152, but that doesn't count the following the Clinton Justra Sustainability Growth Fund, which was created because Bill Clinton used his brand name, according to Frank Justra, the owner of that, also the owner of the third largest gold mining uh, corporation in the world, which is, by the way, fake and connected to Barrick Gold, which is the number one gold mining company in the world, which is also fake. I could go into that at great detail. But Daddy Bush is was with Barrick Gold, and now Bill Clinton is with Gold Corp, Frank Justra. And when they decided to get into uranium, he went over there and talked Putin, literally Putin, because Putin does all uranium deals in Kazakhstan himself, talked him into giving him a useless mine. And that's what created Uranium One. And then later, they, the Russians through Rosatom and Putin bought that. This is what Mueller is hiding. But it, the big deal is not Uranium One, and I'm very sorry for the people who died over it, but if you think you're going to do business with the Russians and someone's not going to die, pinch yourself and wake up. Of course they are. I gave an instance not long ago when one oligarch mentioned the secret name of the richest oligarch in Russia. A couple days later, he was shot down in the street. And he was an oligarch. He has an entire mafia gang around him, protecting him. You don't even mention these people's name. I'm the only one bringing up Felix Sater, and that's because he's twice removed from these people. He is connected to the Russian mob uh, boss in New York City. But I think where we were going is that your biography will show you 
who you are. Yeah, why didn't Mueller, why didn't Andrew Weissman, why didn't Preet Bharara, why didn't any of those U.S. attorneys going after Trump go after the Russian mafia king I'm talking about right here in New York City? Everyone knows who he is, and everyone knows Felix Sater was arrested and turned into an FBI asset who went after Trump and set up one sting, at Russian sting, fake Russian sting, after the next. Couldn't get any of them to work. Those are Comey's deals that Peter Stroke himself, as I have, I didn't say Peter, I said the person in charge of the FBI counterintelligence was doing this from the beginning. They had to. That's why Brennan, when he heard about the dossier, gave it to the FBI. That's admitted in public by both Brennan and Comey. And Comey then said he did not conduct an investigation against the president. That is correct. Peter Stroke conducted a counterintelligence investigation against the president that is still going on to this day because that is what Mueller is continuing and hiding. And the thing is, is that when you've got all these attorneys working behind the scenes, you have to be a very smart and a very clever congressman to ask the right question. And that is why I was so, really a shout out to Ohio Representative Jim Jordan for lately asking those piercing questions. And I want to point something out. No one else is going to point out. So now I understand we have people who are keeping track of uh, our predictions. predictions, Okay. No one, no prediction has been found to be false yet. Well, this is, uh, uh, well, this is my own personal prediction, Uh, but I'll go there in just a minute. Let's talk first about what it is that Mueller is really doing. Mueller is conducting a regime change against Trump, and he's continuing the counterintelligence investigation. Again, for those who might be listening for the first time, Comey has been on Obama's, Hillary's side from the beginning. He actually sat in meetings with them, which he was proud to state he wanted to write an op-ed against Trump. He was then told to cool his jets. But then at that very moment, they had realized in the, in, in the Democratic National Committee with Hillary Clinton with uh, Robbie Mook, with John Podesta, with Alexandria Chalupa, and they had realized through what was already out in December as the WikiLeaks that Hillary Clinton's problem was she's in bed with Putin. She built him a tech city. She's given him all these concessions. She's she's totally in bed with, with Putin, 100%. And so is John Podesta, as we know, the 75,000 shares of Jewel, uh, energy, his uh, $35 million investment in the company from the Russians, on and on and on. And Tony Podesta's brother being uh, so many times a Russian uh, lobbyist that we can't count how many times. 117 times in one year he came in to uh, the White House as a lobbyist with his brother there controlling the White House. So that's the Russian collusion that is being hidden. And we said from the beginning, There was already the FBI investigation, which came out on their website saying that Trump and his father have absolutely zero connection to Russia. Actually, that was incorrect. That shows you how stupid the FBI is. He did have a Russian connection. Felix Sater. He he opened up the Soho Trump with Felix Sater. Felix Sater at that point was an FBI asset, a spy working for Comey. They knew that Trump was going to run for president. They knew he was the wild card. That's why they mentioned it in the paradox of progress. The intelligence community's prediction and five-year plan. And if you haven't read it, just go Google it and read it. It'll be shocking to you how overt they are with these globalist plans. But they knew that Trump could come and Trump could win. So now it's a war against Trump. Mueller was only called in because they had to call their highest level fixer because there's so much to fix. But he's one of the people he's fixing. He didn't get rid of the Uranium One evidence. And when Frank Justra, after getting the Uranium One deal, oh, isn't this an amazing coincidence? Nothing criminal here. Frank Justra's Canadian, by the way. After getting the Uranium One deal, his first uranium mine, which he later sold... And there was, no mine, there was no uranium ever taken out of the mine in, in Kazakhstan. He sold for, I, I forget, $5 billion, $4.1 billion. Anyway, Rosatom, remember when we say Rosatom, we're saying Putin. And I mean that quite literally. No one does any nuclear business but Putin when he's, and that's also in Kazakhstan, because that's where most of the uranium comes from. 
So he gave $100 million to this Clinton Foundation initiative. Okay, this initiative, the uh, Clinton Justra Sustainability Growth Initiative. And then Carlos Slim gave $100 million, And then Frank Justra promised he'd give half of the money he gets from all of his mining, third largest gold corporation in the world. He's going to give half of all the money he makes from all of his mining for the rest of his life to this initiative. Now, take a look at Bill Clinton. He doesn't know his name on some days. Just watch his eyes. He only watches the prettiest body, female body. Just watch it. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. Listen to him, okay? If anybody, is, you know, he, he, we can't trust him to, to do anything. So why is he getting, we already know he got through the, the Clinton Foundations that we know of, $2 billion. Why would he want $200 million and half of Frank Juster's mining? And he, this is the deal he got, okay? And the, uh, this is what the, deal, the kind of deals Bill Clinton does. So why would he need that? He doesn't need it. He's going to be, he's going to drop over any day. He doesn't know where he's at, okay? Hillary, she's not going to be president anymore. And why would he just so blatantly go out and do something so illegal? Because they're nuts. Both he and Hillary, they've gone too far. And so now what they're going to have to do is put it in their daughter. And so huge revelation that we came to literally by uh, research done cooperatively between the uh, Aim for Truth org conclave and the Americans for Innovation, we actually uncovered not only the fact that we are predicting that the number one skeleton in Robert Mueller's closet is Duval Patrick, but we uncovered why the Clintons are so greedy. It didn't make any sense. And 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 I mean I mean we already know that their silly daughter has come out and got a lawyer because she questioned the workings of the foundation because she thought they were illegal. And she found out they were. Yeah, but she is up in, she's knee deep in alligators herself with corruption. But, you know, we were so conditioned when she was a young girl not to look at Chelsea, not to look at Chelsea, so we haven't been looking at her. Folks, you need to look at what Chelsea Clinton's been doing. Oh, yes. What, uh, what did I'll you call the it? The link. backstory? Oh, the incredible backstory of Chelsea Clinton. And I will have a link in the description box for that. Before Chelsea Clinton left college, when she couldn't even work, she was put on a board with some of the most corrupt people in the world that I'll go into in just a moment. But that board now manages about 17 billion a year. Nobody knows. It's 177 companies like Expedia and almost every single dating site, which is gathering up your information okay, and okay, selling it. Okay, but wait it. a minute. If you're running a corporation like that that's that big, um, and you just now are thinking that there might be corruption at the Clinton Foundation, that, that does not wash with me. I don't even know if she knew she was on this board. Because <laughs> okay. I didn't know she was on this board. Nobody knows. None of the mainstream media knows that this woman, well, this uh, this you young can't person. Trust the mainstream they, media. they just full of pack. They're just back lies. Well, as you said, we, we were looking through their veneer, and every single day, fake news is being popped. And they're being caught and they have to come out and they have to retract or they have to fire somebody or they have to fire somebody who are predators. Do you think that a, a sexual predator is going to be unbiased in their news delivery? I don't think so. Now, you expect it out of the horrors in Hollywood. That's what they do. They put violence and horror, horroring up on the screen. That's their job. They bring it into society to make it so palatable that we all think that we should be millionaires that way I'm or sorry i got you off on that tangent it, or sports okay it's sports we're taking the nfl down we we have to and, and the reason we do folks is because they're globalists it's very obvious we want our country to have borders integrity language and culture that's really not what the F nfl has become so for the time being we need to show them who's in charge we're the customers and we're the voters, and we're not going to play that game anymore. We want to see the NFL on both knees. That's oh, that was my opinion. That's true. And when when it's proven we, that we it was play football later. When it's proven, then they take out already. Remember, they did the study on how many fake votes. Uh -huh. The fake votes that they've confirmed are almost five million. Take those out. Trump won sixty five percent. So when I say Trump has sixty five percent of the public, he has that and more, and he has every single veteran, including myself, over this issue of taking a knee for the flag. Don't get me started on that, please. Because I, as a veteran, 
and okay. most of the conclaves Let's, get back, to, let's mm-hmm. get back to um, the uncoverings that we had with Mueller and kind of wrap it up. So they put little Chelsea, who we all know is not Bill's child, and we all know that, uh, that Bill does have a child, and that person has been saying, please give me one of your hairs and I will demonstrate you're my father. And we know Bill has raped at least four women, five, and there's r- rumor of many, many, many more. And that's the person that Hillary was going to put in charge of our economics. Literally, she said that in the campaign. She's not going to run the economics. When you ask her economic question, she says, I'm putting my husband in charge of it because okay, he did such a good job the old, first time. That's, that's what Mueller, no, that's what Mueller is covering up. He's covering up that he is a president maker. Baby Bush would have gone down if he as the FBI director would have investigated 911 instead of creating another Warren Commission, like they investigated the death of JFK. The person who ordered the death of JFK, Alan Dulles, was the the uh, the chairman of the, of the Warren Commission. So nobody he was will, investigating himself. So nobody will question Mueller because he has so much power. Mueller knew 911 was about to happen and of that's the he reason he covered it up because anyone looking at it a fifth grader could have done a better investigation than him well, we did a great investigation they should just take ours and run with it that is ep heidner's uh documentation and indictable information on 911 if you haven't looked at it they, what do we call it the backstory of 911 or I'll something put it in the description box anyway it's an intelligence report that gives you all you need to indict you go back to Daddy Bush. He's the culprit. But there's many others involved, but he was the one who planned it many years in advance because he for he needed it to come up with fake treasury bonds to help the Vulcans take Russia down. And you want to talk about Russia collusion? Mueller no, knew about that. Mueller is as informed as anyone in D.C., and he has more evidence than anyone except Comey. And that's only because... In the, la- in the years Comey was in office, he collected so much evidence, espionage evidence. The, the greatest cases of espionage, both with the private server in Hillary's uh, uh, house, the, the DNC server, and the servers that were the fake servers set up by the Awans uh, in the Congress, as well as the, um, the servers that were set up outside of the Congress that they are still, we believe, have access to. Mueller's not investigating any of that. The Russians right now could probably buy anything they want by, from people who have direct access to it and or hacking it. They don't even have to hack. Why would they want to hack? Hillary did an investigate. Don't get me started. There was Russian hacking, Russian involvement, but it was Hillary. She paid for the dossier. The dossier paid a British agent. Hello, right there. That's that's illegal. And then he paid Russians. That's super illegal. So when they found out that the biggest fallacy, the biggest weakness of Hillary, and the WikiLeaks stated this because they got a Podesta email, they had to cover Hillary's connection to Russia, so they turned it around and accused Trump. That's what Hil- he's, that is what, is what uh, Robert Mueller is hiding. But what he's also hiding is right after he hopes to put Duval Patrick in the White House, for as many terms as he can be there, it will be Chelsea Clinton because Chelsea Clinton is now being placed in these organizations where she makes not only huge amounts of money and the huge amounts of money from all the Clinton foundations will all go to her because they've already proven they don't give more than 5% on anything. It's usually 2%. And then it just goes for what? Their expenses. We don't even know how much money they have. So how much money does, does Chelsea have? What does she know? We don't know. But we know one thing, she sits on a board with Edgar Bronfman, whose father and he are so corrupt, I could go on all day about them. She sits on the board with Barry Diller, a guy who's worked for every news agency and media. And a very handsome man, He's too. the ugliest oh, thing ch- I've ever seen out, because his, his spirit is ugly. Yes, everything he, is it's horrendous. 177 companies, most of which derived fr- from... The Facebook uh, patents. Now, there were patent cases going on when they did all of this. Most of those companies were set up while there were literally the Supreme Court was heard or at least reviewed this case, but it was all the way up to the Supreme Court. So any of those companies using that stolen material is illegal. So not only did Americans for Innovation find Duval Patrick and Robert Mueller 
doctoring past records to make sure that they will hide the fact that they're connected at the hip and always have been, I mean, for decades and still will be in the future. That way he's clean when he comes in to be appointed, you know, again, it's always musical chairs between the FBI head and the, and the uh, Department of Justice head. And so whoever heads those, it's always back and forth. Why should they be? I mean, they do work for one another, but there should be uh, not just always the same criminals and then we even know we can predict who the next criminals will take their place are. Now we're predicting who the de Democrats will actually seriously run. We've heard probably over 20 people's names mentioned, but it will be. Oh, is this the prediction you were going to have earlier? This is it. Okay. Duval Patrick Duval. will run against Trump in 2020 and he will lose miserably. And I have another prediction. It isn't going to happen because the folks out there are awake. They see his resume and they're going to call him out before he even gets through the primaries. Well, that's okay. We want to bring attention so people get awakened to who he is. But we, when we look at all the other candidates, they're even more malleable, but they're just not as experienced. He is the head of the fake Obama Foundation. Now, this is absurd. This man is as fake as he can possibly be. So we went back, uh, excuse me, Americans for Innovation, went back and looked at his record. And his, uh, when he charged Bill Clinton, he and when he worked for the NAACP, he lied. He said he was a U.S. attorney. Lie. It's all on record. He lied about his connection with Mueller, and he's lied about the cases of Acorn in Arkansas against Bill Clinton himself. He lied at that point and said that he was appointed to another office he wasn't appointed to. So this man, we're pointing out, Duval Patrick is a huge liar. He will be protected by Robert Mueller, but Robert Mueller's other people are all coming unraveled. And after that, it will be Chelsea Clinton after they place her just like they're placing place Duvall in the Ford Foundation, in Bain Capital, make him a governor of Massachusetts, the most easily vote manipulated state in the union last year. We saw buses of people going between, I mean, for the presidential election, it was caught red handed buses and buses and buses, people going between Maine, Vermont New Hampshire and Massachusetts, same people, illegal voters voting in all those states at every single place they can. As a matter of fact, it's been proven that Trump won one of those states once you take out the false votes. So we are watching the deep state crumble. Don't be discouraged. We're calling, as Betsy says, we're calling these people out. We're seeing through the veneer. We're seeing through fake news. We are going to call these people out for who they are. We're going to give you their biographies, and then you judge yourself if you would trust that person in any elected position where there is any power. And what you're going to find out is people like Bruce Orr, who was just demoted to another position. Well, he was a criminal. He was a criminal. He was the leaker. He was working with Christopher Steele and Glenn Simpson. He met with them. The fact that he met with them, he goes to jail. He's the leaker. That doesn't take a genius. There's one, another prediction. He's the leaker. That will come out. Who's the other leaker? Well, Peter Stroke is going to get in trouble for his sex texting. He should have learned from Kwame Kilpatrick. You don't sex text when you're an official because he can get all your texts, no matter what kind of phone you think you have. A burner phone, black phone, doesn't matter. So the sex texting, don't forget, Lisa Page was on Mueller's committee on Mueller's investigation. She had to get kicked off and now the news shifts it over and says she works for somebody in the SEC. Lie. They were having an affair which compromised both of their top secret security clearances that had to be given them to study the president. They'd all have to be given top secret security clearances, okay? They're studying the president, a sitting president. So they had that clearance. I've signed many of those clearances and I'll tell you what, having an affair loses that clearance because you compromised yourself. You couldn't get a bigger compromised group of people than Mueller's investigation. So that's another one of our investigation. Another thing we're going to say also, we're going to point out that Andrew Weissman was in support within 24 hours of Sally Yates standing up treasonously to her boss, giving her an order, Donald Trump. Since he supported her, his bias is tremendous. He's got to go. Peter Stork, he's got to go. Peter Stork hasn't gone. And by the way, nobody else is telling you this. We're going to tell you this. Mark this down in your book, y'all. If this doesn't come right, make sure to come back. This is from the conclave. That, of course, Peter Stork did not get fired. He got moved to the HR department. Why? 
He's one of the star witnesses. He interviewed Flynn. So the very text that they're referring that they did entrapment with this word or that word, uh, legal, uh, legal tricks entrapment, that would have been directly from the testimony of one of their star witnesses, which would have been Peter Stroke. They can't fire him. Then the investigation's over because one part of it was so horribly tainted. Okay, well, it's all been tainted, folks, and we're going to go back to our prediction. They will get a couple low-hanging fruit, George Papadopoulos, General Flynn, for a what, lying to the FBI. We also said they'd use the Logan Act on them and say that say they didn't register as a foreign agent. Well, that's been used on Manafort and Rick Gates. We also said that it's highly likely that Manafort will not actually, he'll be indicted, he will not be convicted, he's too slick. They've been after him for years, so good luck on that one. No other evidence has come forward. It's a lie that they've subpoenaed uh, the records at Deutsche Bank for Trump, uh, Trump's financial records. That's a lie. Most of the rest of the stuff you hear are lies, folks. Don't believe it. And anything we just talked about, in most cases, uh, except for the court record, which again was leaked, but I am quoting from court record in some cases, it was leaked. All these are leaks. A single leak from a grand jury indictment, it has to be closed. Yeah, but you see, Mueller's been hanging around too long because people are waking up and they know about all of his other corruption. You have to imagine this is an information war and he's got himself in a corner. He's got to get out. He's in dangerous territory. The people know who he is. So how does he get himself extracted from where he is? Well, he just painted himself into a corner and then he looked up. And the TV that was on the stand above his head dropped on his head. And that's Duval Patrick and the corruption yeah. that is being, revol- being revealed down, here. Brothers and, sisters. and because we show how he and or Duval doesn't matter, doesn't matter to us which one, both of them have to be disbarred. Uh-huh. One or both have to be disbarred. But we see it in Duval uh, in cases in Arkansas twice. And then if we looked closely, we probably see it in many other cases. So they have covered their tracks. And when they did, that's illegal. They can't be lawyers. Good. It shouldn't be any lawyers anyway. You say lawyer, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, name a good lawyer. But anyway, so what's happening here is a good thing. 